I do want to share it because it's important is that when I started to make the move and word started to get around that the office was priming me for a WWE championship run. There were a handful of guys in the business at that time. They did everything they could to stop that run from happening. I get it now. Chad Frost wasn't a real wrestler. It's a pseudonym. That's right. That guy never turned out to be a friend. Oh, yeah. He almost <laughs> heartbreak kid. My wrestling blogs, they are going to be blowing up about Chad Frost's true identity. You know, I was friends with you coming in, but when Sean came back, I wasn't really friends with Sean. In fact, like the first time I met Sean, I was going over a promo with Rock, and he like was up so rocks. Oh, go here we go again. But for the most part, everybody's supportive. Speaking you know, of rockers, I wanted to talk about your relationship with the Rock a little bit. Did you? What's your opinion on the Rock? As far as I know, Sheets have said you guys have personal views. What did we just see? I mean, I don't know how true it is. Really? I don't know. It's a like this. As far as... I, don't I can remember Triple H on a flight to Dubai and talking about Dwayne. Can you believe this guy? He thinks he's a superstar. <laughs> Triple H just pick on every night. In fact, Triple H finds himself in a very precarious position regarding his job security after his wife has been exposed as a potential accomplice in the Vince McMahon shit show. Triple H was the same. He was always out to get Rock. Did you know that The Rock's childhood friend was the executive producer for his now-canceled TV show Young Rock and who collaborated closely with former head of creative at WWE, Ryan Gerwitz? Those two guys walk hand-in-hand, hand, lockstep. A lot of people don't realize that the brilliance behind all of those classic rock uh, promos was Brian Gerwitz. On the scripts. Interestingly, that person happens to be Nick Khan's sister, forging a unique connection between The Rock and Nick Khan, who are childhood friends themselves. The Rock's return to WWE signifies a very strategic move. The Rock holds himself to an extremely high standard. He goes into each backstage interview, each in-ring promo, and each movie and non-wrestling related project today with the same mindset he had when I met him at that MTV shoot in 99. How can we do something no one's ever done before? How do we raise the bar higher than it's ever been? Eddie Emanuel has gone on the record multiple times stating that he loses sleep every day due to the fact that he is operating out of billions of dollars of debt. Why would he give The Rock $30 million and gave him probably what is the most valuable trademark in the WWE library, The Rock? along with 26 other trademarks. Sick Man had added a special clause into the contract when he sold the WWE that made it financially irresponsible for Ari and TKO to fire Vince McMahon. Ari called Vince McMahon a visionary, but days before this Netflix announcement, there was this report that stated how much of a drain Vince McMahon is on potential sponsorships. And if there's one thing I've learned in years of business, it's that you don't stand in the way of money and a suit. So I do want to take a moment just to acknowledge this guy. There's no CEO in the world like this guy. We've known each other for 20 years. We've done a lot of big business together. These game-changing deals that he's making as a reflection, I think, of who he is. So the only option would be for him to resign. Now, is there some conspiracy with Ari playing a role in Vince getting the shift? As only days later, Janelle Grant would submit her complaint forcing Vince McMahon to resign. But when Endeavor acquired UFC, allowing Dana White to retain significant control while they focused on maximizing profits. With Vince McMahon no longer at the helm, WWE faces a very unique transition. Can't tell you how many times I've told Nick, come on man, tell me more, tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> the partnership between The Rock and Ari Emanuel has undeniably shifted the power dynamics within WWE. The Rock's bloodline now reigns supreme, marking a significant departure from the McMahon era. Mr. McMahon and Dana White have a knack for reshaping history to suit their current narratives. Wrestlers who once held the spotlight could be quickly erased. Legacies cast aside like yesterday's news. So what's to stop The Rock from following suit? The hierarchy of power in the WWE universe is about to change. WWE's gesture of gifting him his name carries immense significance. Vince McMahon's appreciation for the value of name is well known, considering his history of trademark ownership. 
No, I cannot be uh, Cody Rhodes wherever I go that is uh, televised. I wish that was different, and it should be different. I know of Vince holding on to way less valuable trademarks just out of spite. Call you The Rock. He said, now that I own it, I can call you The Rock. Yes, I own it now. You can call me The Rock. The WWE finds itself in a new narrative landscape, now owned by a corporation that values The Rock's opinions above all others. In early 2000, The Rock was looking for something new he could say to his longtime rival, Triple H. As we met backstage early that afternoon, I pointed out a particular speech pattern that I, as a fan, always noticed. He had a habit of attaching a big, uh, to his words. So tonight, uh, in this very ring, uh, that kind of thing. Come out here and you run your mouth and every single week you subject all of us. I admit, my goal in pointing out Triple H's uhs wasn't altruistic. I just wanted The Rock to have something he could sink his teeth into and make fun of. I explained this all to Rock and even imitated Triple H's voice. Rock found it hilarious and wanted to use it in his promo with Triple H that night. All we had to do was get it approved by Vince. To watch you stand in the middle of the ring, grab a microphone, and you say this. We strode into Vince's office to find Hunter and Stephanie and all of DX. I hadn't exactly endeared myself to DX at that point. It was just weeks earlier when I was supposed to produce a DX vignette backstage. I walked in feigning confidence, outlining the scene and camera positioning and the blocking as I asked if anyone had any questions. I got one, Billy Gunn replied. Who the f*** are you? So it wasn't exactly a warm room when Rock and I strode in. Vince asked what we had in mind. With Triple H looking on intently, Rock took over. It was a look I got from him early and often in my tenure at WWE. 2002, he listened to his agent. He listened to all the people and said, hey, you've got to disconnect. Remember, his early movies didn't make any money because he walked away cold turkey and the WWE Universe said, we made you. I'm not spending $10. And by the way, one of the people Rock has shared with me and Vince has shared with me, Rock called Vince and said, this is not working. You know, I think I want to sort of reattach to WWE. I think I need to get a new agent. Vince helped him do that. The Rock's last few movies weren't box office winners, and he hasn't actually had a movie come out since 2022 with Black Adam. If he would have stayed on Monday Night Raw from 2002 to 2005, he would have probably made another three to $500 million. I won't get into it here too deeply as this video would become too long. Bottom line is, it seems the mainstream audience is either burnt out or feel that The Rock is somewhat not genuine as he has been caught in a number of unfortunate situations, to put it lightly. A fake Joe Rogan pretending he was happy to have The Rock in studio, and a fake The Rock pretending he was happy for Joe Rogan. Dwayne Johnson seemingly lies about eating In-N-Out for the first time. That he's trying In-N-Out for the first time every couple of years. Why? Why are you lying about that? They came to cancel him. And in that moment, the biggest star in Hollywood, The Rock, piled on. Suits are just using him like a fucking fleshlight, like this puppet of ventriloquism act, where they are talking through the rock. That is a good combo. Here we go. Yeah, he couldn't even eat a meal without plugging his own shit. And the reasons behind it were wildly political. This aspect adds another layer to The Rock's prominence in WWE's future. Meeting Tim Tebow, myself, Vince McMahon, Triple H in Anaheim, California about that. And I, Triple H and I remained in touch. Nick doesn't say anything for no reason. Yeah. He basically went off and developed his own relationship very separate from The Rock. Even publicly, we didn't know about it until years later when The Rock makes that infamous Instagram post. So the last round of U.S. negotiations, with, which ultimately ended up with Fox and NBCU, we all did that together. So we had success in that. And as you know, success can oftentimes breed closeness amongst individuals. So but here's a very ironic aside. So there was a report that Fox actually forced the WWE to use another agency as they originally were represented by Ari Emanuel and Endeavor in those negotiations. But because Fox were also negotiating with Endeavor over the rights on the UFC, Fox considered that a conflict of interest. This then pushed WWE to go to The Rock's old agency, CAA, which Nick Khan was now basically the head of, and which was the top rival to Endeavor and Ari Emanuel's company. 
August of 19, Triple H, uh, he and his wife, good friends of mine, invited me and, and my wife to his 50th birthday party. Tell us about New Hampshire, about Triple H's 50th birthday. Wow. Yeah? Yeah. Which was really his closest friends and family member. There might have been over 50, but not much. Okay. As far as how many people were there. And like Paul said, it's like only people I want. Right. Like, actually. Like, it could have been a, a, yeah. a lot bigger. And actually a lot of people, I think, got their feelings hurt. So at that party, obviously, Vince was there, Linda McMahon was there, and it was the first time that I thought to myself, wow, this really feels comfortable. It felt like family to me. This is the boss, so you're not gonna call him out if you disagree with something. He's polite by nature, as you know. Agreed. He preferred to be polite, but he's certainly comfortable if it has to go a different route. So what I found with Vince was I could say anything to him directly in person, as long as it was in a respectful way, and he'd always hear it. I shocked all of us here in the World Wrestling Federation. Federation. In doing that, I made you a crippled freak. But Owen kicked right out after three. Why? To make himself look strong like he was barely beat. That kick out hurt me like hell. 